Today's video is sponsored by Live Home 3D, the app for designing your apartment or house. Hey, it's Chris. I just got done watching the Time Flies Apple event. I wanna give you guys my reaction. In this video, I've picked the five coolest announcements, in my opinion, and I'm gonna also share three things that you might have missed. So today's event was very focused on three things, actually iPads, the Apple Watch, and also Apple services. Now, there was talk of new sensors on the new Apple Watch. That's cool, but it didn't make my list of the top five things. The iPhone 12 was not mentioned at all, which was kind of expected from the rumors at this point. The regular iPad, the most affordable iPad, saw a nice spec bump. We saw some new accessories, and we even got some new services. But the number one thing that I'm most excited about from this event has got to be the brand new iPad Air, which basically, if you bought an iPad Pro in the last year, you're probably kicking yourself right now because this iPad Air, which starts at 599, is everything that I basically want or need from an iPad Pro, including having a faster chip now at this point, in a much cheaper and now more stylish package, I would say. The brand new iPad Air looks very much like the 11 inch iPad Pro. You get a 10.9 inch display, but what's very different and what's very exciting are all the new colors that the iPad Air now comes in. The new Air has a fully laminated display, which is great. If you've ever used a regular iPad and an iPad Pro, you know that the displays are a little bit different. It makes a difference when using an Apple Pencil. On the cheaper iPads, the pencil doesn't seem to touch where the ink is actually coming out, so this is actually much nicer. I just say it's such a great thing that the iPad Pro design language with these thinner bezels and what Apple calls an all-screen design finally caught up to the iPad Airs because it looks so much better than that forehead and chin with that home button that just, it didn't look right, it didn't look good, it looks so old. Now that doesn't mean that Face ID is making an appearance on the iPad Airs. That's still an iPad Pro thing only. What's crazy now is that because of the pandemic and just supply chains and how everything's worked out this year, we now have the debut of the A14 chip hitting the iPad lineup first instead of debuting in an iPhone. So it kind of flip-flopped there. We're getting the fastest processor in this iPad first, which is weird. Here's the thing, in the new iPad Air, not even the Pro, you have Apple's most advanced, best, fastest chip ever. Of course, Apple Silicon's coming, but we're not gonna talk about that right now. And here's my big question for you. I mean, for all intents and purposes, this is basically like an iPad Pro, right? Minus just a few things that a lot of people aren't gonna care about. The question is, what do you do with all this power? Where are the Pro apps? that you can actually take advantage of this power to do powerful things with. There's no Final Cut Pro here, you know? A lot of people are gonna use this and want to do Pro things with it. By the way, speaking of iPads, I just did that all white out iPad Pro accessories setup for the iPad Pro, but it's gonna look equally good for the iPad Air that's coming out as well. So check out that video, I'll link it up down below for you, but that's neither here nor there. Of course, it's gonna work with the Apple Pencil. I'm really excited about that. And it's the V2, because they talked about the regular iPad, the budget iPad, being able to work with the Apple Pencil and use Scribble and all the new features that are coming in iPad OS 14, which is great, but I'm glad that iPad Air users are now gonna be able to magnetically attach and store and charge their Apple Pencils like the Pro users have been able to do because it's always charged and never lost, and that's a huge convenience plus Magic Keyboard support. The Magic Keyboard is the best typing experience on an iPad, period. This is my favorite keyboard to type on, period, for any device ever. Yes, it has some flaws. There's no function keys up here, but it's backlit. And if you plan on doing a lot of laptop-like tasks, then I think that's something that's worth saving up for and grabbing. On the other hand, like I've said many times, if you're more of an artistic, creative person, you're gonna be doing more with the Apple Pencil than with the keyboard, then maybe you should look for something else. Still though, options. Options are good, and now you have some of the best options that have only been available to the Pro users at an iPad Air price. The second coolest announcement for me today was the debut of the Apple Watch SE. In other words, a more budget-friendly Apple Watch. That's right, I'm picking that as the second thing for me because the Apple Watch Series 6 is amazing. It's got some new sensors, can measure blood oxygen and elevation in real time, and it's really cool. But I like the idea of letting more people get onto the Apple Watch bandwagon, get into the ecosystem. I think more people are actually gonna end up caring about that being able to just get an Apple Watch, making it more affordable, and having 
you know, the core Apple Watch experience rather than the latest, greatest Apple Watch experience. And the main reason that I say that is because eventually those amazing features are gonna trickle down. So the pricing for the SE is 279, which is really nice. And really what you're getting is the design of the Apple Watch Series 6, but with just the essential features of the Apple Watch. So you're still gonna get an accelerometer, a gyroscope, a compass, an altimeter, and fall detection. You know, the Series 6, which actually comes in some new colors and that's very cool. I appreciate that, I like that. With the red band, it looks insane. The new blue, that's really cool. The new gold, I mean, these are interesting things, but at the end of the day, those don't enhance any of the functionality of your Apple Watch. They're just purely visual. Oh, and I should mention, I'm excited that there's a cellular model available for the SE users. I love having cellular on my Apple Watch. It's one of the ways that I can kind of disconnect after work if I leave my phone somewhere else and just get out you know, some reading material and I can still stay connected with that LTE even if my phone's not with me. If I go on a walk, I can leave the phone but still get messages, make calls. I like that a lot, so I'm glad that there's that option. The next biggest thing for me, I think, was the debut of Apple One, which is Apple's new services bundle, which is all-encompassing. Well, actually, there's some tiers. So Apple's really been digging into the services lately, right? Apple News, uh, iCloud, that's the original, Apple TV+, Plus, Apple Arcade, and a brand new service, which I'm gonna get to in just a second, because it's my next most excited about item. But if you wanna save a little bit of money, make things a little bit more convenient for yourself or for your family, then you can get an individual subscription for $15 a month, which saves you about $6 a month if you just subscribed individually for Apple Music, TV+, Plus, Arcade, and then 50 gigs of iCloud storage. Now, everyone's different, but for me personally, the things that I care about out of that package mostly are the iCloud storage and Apple Music. Apple TV+, Plus, it just hasn't been hugely impactful for me yet. Maybe that'll change. And Apple Arcade, I've lost track of how many times I've tried it out and then canceled it. And it's stayed canceled for a while now. I just haven't found it worth it. And part of that is just me having less time to you know, just while away with games and stuff. You can also bump up to a family plan, which gives you all of that stuff, but increases your iCloud storage to 200 gigs for $20 a month, which is gonna save you like $8 a month. Okay, but the thing that people are probably most interested in is gonna be this premier level, which is a $30 a month subscription, ouch. So this one, I guess, is gonna save you $25 a month, but you get music, TV+, arcade, iCloud, and you bump up to two terabytes, which is the storage tier I'm on anyways, and then it adds News Plus and that other new service, which I'm gonna get to shortly. It's not that it's super exciting, really. It's just that you can save some money if you are going all in with Apple services. That's the whole thing, just saving the money. All right, the next thing for me, which I almost could have put this ahead of, Apple One, to be honest, was the new Fitness Plus service. So Apple's kind of going full Peloton here, minus the hardware. Well, minus the bike and minus the treadmill, they're going full into content for fitness people, but they're building it around the Apple Watch, which is kind of an interesting play. So there's all these workouts that you can do, kind of the most popular things, ranging from walking or running on a treadmill to even things like rowing, strength training, core, hit, whatever. There's a lot of stuff, and this does interest me. You guys know I'm kind of in the middle of a move, and I just bought some new fitness equipment. So what's cool here is you don't have to go buy a super expensive Peloton bike, which actually Peloton just came out with one that integrates with GymKit, so you, it can sync up with your Apple Watch too, but it's pretty expensive. I'm somebody who is on the verge of buying a new Peloton bike, but what's neat about this is I can go anywhere and have this content and do these exercises. I don't have to be tied to wherever specific machine happens to be, at the gym or in my house. You can just use whatever bike you've got laying around. It doesn't have to be some amazing bike, or you could use whatever treadmill. It doesn't have to be the expensive Peloton. For instance, I'm just using Peloton because it's really well known. And I'm excited to see there's a lot of content that doesn't even require any kind of equipment. But what I really like about it is how it integrates with your different devices. So if you're experiencing this with the Apple TV, then all your stats from your Apple Watch are gonna show up on the Apple TV. If you're watching on an iPhone, those stats are gonna be available on your iPhone screen or your iPad screen. So it's really adaptable. And this is just a great example of how the Apple ecosystem plays so nicely together and how you can do things that you just can't do in a different 
manufacturer's ecosystem. It sounds like it's really interactive. I mean, I think this is really cool. If you hit a key milestone, then you kind of get a celebration. Your Apple Watch celebrates for you, right? When you close your rings, it kind of throws a little party on the screen. Well, now it's gonna do that, but in the corner of your iPad or your iPhone or your Apple TV. The other thing too is that it really integrates with Apple Music. So if you hear some songs within Fitness Plus that you like, or a playlist, you can easily add that to your Apple Music uh, library, which is, that's again, a good example of just Apple being Apple and just cross pollinating between all their different devices and apps. And the number five coolest announcement for me today was the addition of some new Apple Watch bands. This is a tough one because again, you have the Apple Watch Series 6 with its new sensors and you have some new watch faces, but I still don't have a watch face that gives me nine complications on it at a time like I've always wanted. So. You know, new watch face, new watch face, fine. But new bands, that's actually kind of exciting to me. Uh, right now I have the old school Leather Loop, which is my favorite band. Once I got it about a year ago, I haven't taken it off or used anything else. And that's really saying something from me because I have a lot. And you guys know I also own that Porsche 19 something or other leather Porsche band that was specially made limited edition that somebody sent me and that looks great, it's very cool, but this is just so convenient. There's a new leather loop band, which kind of has a sleeker, actually, it almost looks a little more retro to me, design, but it looks cool, I would love to try it. There's a new solo loop band, which is really weird almost. It hooks in to both sides of your Apple Watch, and then it stretches. So you would stretch it, put it on, and then it just kind of comes back onto your wrist, and there's no clasps, no overlapping, um, it seems pretty novel. Today's video is sponsored by Live Home 3D, a Mac, iOS, and Windows app that lets you quickly and easily design your apartment or home. Whether you wanna create a home from scratch or wanna play around with the included sample houses and fully decorated room interiors, Live Home 3D makes bringing your vision to life simple and straightforward. You can import blueprints, you can show your floor plan, and the built-in tools will let you create rooms and walls and do all the things that you need to, like add furniture. And the iPad app features an AR experience that lets you literally walk around the interior of your home so you can see a 3D view based on your floor plan. When you're done, you can export your creation as a 3D object or as images or even as a walkthrough video. So check out Live Home 3D using the link down in the description. Now very briefly to wrap this up, I wanna mention three things that you may not have realized if you watch this event or as you're going through the recaps and all the news. Number one, there was just the briefest mention of the iPad mini. You might think that there would be some kind of update to the iPad mini. Well, there wasn't. And I don't really know what that means. It could mean nothing. Maybe the mini will just get a press release update sometime in the next 12 months, or maybe it'll be around for another two years. I really don't know. One of the things that was really exciting about today's event is that we found out that iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, I think even tvOS, could be wrong, fact check me, are all coming out tomorrow, the next version. So iOS 14 is gonna land tomorrow ahead of the iPhone 12 a launch announcement, which is weird. Everything's kind of thrown off this year. But one thing that we're not gonna see tomorrow, there's no mention of macOS Big Sur, which is kind of a shame because it's very different than the Mac OS that you're used to. It's really a big deal. It's in a lot of ways a bigger update than what you're seeing in iPad OS or iOS. And so, yeah, it's nowhere to be seen. We're still in beta for Big Sur. The last thing that I wanna point out is that we got kind of an interesting cropped in shot of the camera on the iPad Air. And for just a second, I thought that maybe they had moved it like I wanted them to, to the side, which for me usually ends up being the top of the iPad, because I'm almost always using the iPad in landscape mode. But Apple always puts the camera on the top as if it was the top where when you're in portrait mode. And if you're using Face ID, that's really annoying. If you're on a, a, a FaceTime call, for instance, that's okay, but it's not ideal. So I'm pretty sure that they actually didn't move that. Again, fact check me, but if they didn't, that's too bad because in future iPads, especially the iPad Pro, I would love to see that camera make the switch to the side or the top. For me, it's the top. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys like this recap. Give me your uh, feedback down below. Let me know what you're most excited about. Are you gonna pick up a new Apple Watch or a new iPad Air? Let me know all that stuff. Don't forget to check out The After Party. That's our podcast. We're sure to talk about all of this stuff this week as well. That's every Friday. Don't forget to check out applehype.com. I'll let you go there and explore. It'll take 15 seconds to be like, wow, how did I live without it? Uh, also, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.